Welcome back to Network Africa. We'd like to bring your attention to the breaking story scrolling right under your screen there. A petrol tanker burst into flames today at the Olorunda K2 area of Lagos. The accident has caused huge traffic gridlock in the area and those coming from Lagos Island through Third Mainland Bridge are advised to seek alternative routes. Uh, this is calling the attention of men of the fire service to actually come and bring the situation under control. Again, a fire tanker has burst its flames at the Olorunda K2 area of Lagos. The accident has caused a huge traffic gridlock in the area. And those coming from the island, that's Lagos Island, through the Third Mainland Bridge are advised to seek alternative routes. We hope that men of the fire service make it there as soon as possible. Now, there is a big break in the African health world, specifically in Tanzania, where a chemical engineer has designed an innovative water filter using nanotechnology to purify water. According to the inventor, Dr. Asqua Hilonga, his filter can remove up to 99.9% .9 of microorganisms and contaminants. Take a look. It looks good enough to drink. But just seconds before, it was full of dirt and bacteria. Dr. Asqua Hilonga is a Tanzanian scientist who's created a water filter that he says can remove 99.9% .9 of bacteria, microorganisms and viruses. This is clean, safe drinking water. The invention uses nanotechnology to filter out contaminants and produce clean water. The idea was inspired by a visit to his parents' village outside of Arusha in Tanzania, where many people still risk their lives drinking dirty water and often suffer from waterborne diseases. Catherine Naniaro is a housewife and lives in Arusha. She says the filter has also helped her save time as she goes about her chores. The filter can be tailored to absorb anything from copper and fluoride to bacteria and viruses. Gravity pulls the water down through a series of buckets connected by tubes and the buckets contain sand with a layer of good bacteria on the top which eats the microbes that contain diseases like typhoid. The magnetic quality of the sand also kills other bacteria as the water filters through it. The final bucket uses nanomaterials to filter out any remaining microbes. In short, an invisible biological net which stops bacteria from passing through but allows the water to reach the final bucket bacteria-free. Dr. Hilonga was one of the only four students in his year to graduate from primary school. When he returned home after university, he started looking for ways to use his expertise to help people. In Tanzania, 70% of households, of 9 million households, are not using any kind of a filter. That is how big the market is. That is in Tanzania alone. 9 million households. Then imagine in Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Sub-Saharan Africa, India and elsewhere. So the market is very big. One filter is capable of supplying many liters of clean water a day. The Blue Sky Primary School in Arusha uses it to quench the thirst of more than 70 children. Well, we analyze the water around and we have a river like 50 meters far from here. And we saw that it was not uh, healthy, that, that water. Then we, we took water from the government supply, but we also saw that it was not going to be healthy and we want the best things for our kids, so we decided to, to buy the filter. Dr. Hilonga has received a grant from the United States government to help him make his filter available commercially. One filter costs about 140 US dollars. And breakthroughs. Now, speaking of big breaks, an international study has revealed that a new method of applying insecticide to netting has proved 100% effective against some strains of mosquito. The electrostatic coating allows the netting to carry much higher doses of insecticide. And in experiments, the coating killed off many more mosquitoes than usual. Dutch researchers writing in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences 
are optimistic that this could help control diseases such as malaria. Insecticide resistance in mosquitoes has become a significant problem in many parts of the world where malaria is endemic, especially here in Nigeria. But it is thought that water-based spray insecticides and bed nets, which often contain low levels of insecticide, don't always kill the mosquitoes, allowing them to develop resistance. And so let's head on to Zambia, where intermittent power supply threatens the key sectors of economic growth in the country, with business owners experiencing regular power cuts that they say are eating into profits. As comes after mining companies operating in Zambia's copper belt recently agreed to reduce power usage by between 10 and 15 percent to ease pressure on the national grid after water levels at hydroelectric plants dropped due to drought. Now, I've been told now that Dr. Bambui Afolabi, a malaria, malariologist, joins us now on Network Africa to discuss uh, this new, uh, this breakthrough in uh, the treatment of uh, malaria as well as its containment. Dr. Afolabi, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What do you make of uh, this new insecticide being applied to netting, which has proved 100% effective? Is it possible to kill malaria, I mean, to kill mosquitoes that effectively? Yes. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I think uh, there's a new science that is being advanced in the fight against mosquitoes. <coughs> we all know that mosquitoes carry malaria, and we are... The, the scientific world is doing so much research that um, we are now using a new technique in electrostatic coating, which allows mosquitoes to come close to the net, and then they will stay, and then the, the, the concentration of the insecticide is uh, get into the mosquitoes in higher doses. And this is what we really want. This is uh, a breakthrough, in a, in a way. It's a modern breakthrough in the fight against malaria. Doctor, is this any different from the malaria nets that we have here in Nigeria? Um, there's one particular one going round uh, that the Ministry of Health is actually distributing, uh, the, the treated nets that are being distributed in, in rural areas. Is it any different from this one? Yeah, this, this is much, much uh, advanced. It's better. The, the um, current long-lasting insecticide net, I think, is uh, something of the past, you know. The this research was carried out in Netherlands, and um, it, it's an advancement it was in what we used to know. There is nothing that is stationary in the world of science. We keep on advancing. Maybe 10, 20, 30 years from now, a better fight against malaria will come up. But now, as of now, this epistatic coating is the best the, the world can offer. The world of science and research. And it's much, much better than what we used to know. I mean, science and research have found out that definitely this is going to go. And how much of malaria will be eradicated with this net, uh, especially for countries where uh, malaria is prevalent uh, here in Nigeria and in some other parts of Africa? Well, so far, the, the research has shown that 100% of the mosquitoes that heat or that light on this electrostatic material get killed. So if we are able to do our own research here, we may be able to answer that question very well. You know, we may be able to answer that question very well if we're able to do the research here. I think we should do our own research among our own people and uh, find out exactly how this, how this, um, electrostatic material, how it works among our people, among our, uh, our, our own mosquitoes, in our own environment. And I think we have good materials, we have good professionals who can do this work here in Nigeria. But we cannot tell the government that this is the way to go. This is evidence-based research, and a policy should be made from such an evidence-based research. Dr. Ba Dr. Afolabi... The government... Uh, Dr. Afebi, sorry, I, I'm sorry I had to cut in there, but thank you so much for explaining all of this to us. Um, we're hoping that um, uh, these nets get to Africa as quickly as possible. Um, we, know, we understand that they're in the Netherlands, but we do hope that they make it down here quickly and um, 
I know that this is a big one, especially for malarologists like yourself. Thank you for joining us Thank on Network course. Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And just as we end the program today, we'd like to bring an update on that story that we broke earlier. A petrol tanker burst into flames at uh, the Olorunda K2 area of Lagos. The accident caused huge traffic gridlock in the area for those coming from Lagos Island through the third mainland bridge in Lagos and, and have been advised to take alternative routes. We understand now that the fire has been put out, meaning that men of the fire service did make it there in time. Again, the fire has been put out, but uh, the traffic gridlock still remains. So take it easy out there. Thanks for watching Network Africa. I am Amarachi Ubani.